God to Moses. He said, take off those sandals off your feet. For the ground on which you stand on is holy. And he came closer. As we draw closer to the Lord, we will begin to come to that place. So I declare today that the place where you are standing is holy ground. May the Lord begin to speak to you. May you come into that place where you would hear the voice of the Lord. You would hear the heartbeat of the Father. And He would reveal His thoughts and His heart and His purposes towards you. You are a great God. You are a wonderful God. You are a merciful God. There is no one like you, God, in all the earth. We declare an open heaven over this house tonight and over the lives of your people. We declare an open heaven about a place where you will begin to speak and you will begin to reveal your heart and you will reveal your thoughts to us the Lord. For oh, great is the Lord. The book of Isaiah chapter 6 verses 3 It says that the whole earth will be full of the glory of the Lord As I look at the scripture the Bible says and the whole earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord it says in Isaiah chapter 4 verses 2 And the branch of the Lord in that day The branch of the Lord will be beautiful and glorious And the fruit of the land will, will be the pride and the glory Of the survivors in Israel But then he comes in, 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 in book of Haggai And he says and the glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house. The King James Virgin says, and the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. He says, thus saith the Lord, and in this place, I will grant you peace. Then he comes in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verses 13, and says, has not the, the Lord Almighty determined that the that people's labor is only the fuel for the fire. That the nations exhaust themselves for nothing. And then he says in verses 14. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. As the waters cover the sea. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters covered the sea. As we look at the portions of scripture, all of the pictures, all of the prophetic promises that are listed in these scriptures, all speak of a glory, a coming glory, that is yet to be found manifestation on the earth. I'm here to say to you, we're living in anticipation. Live with an expectation. That there's yet a glory to, that is yet to be revealed. The Bible refers to glory as the, the, the very essence of that which sustains the, the Godhead. And God is saying, the same glory. That's why in John 17, he says, now Father, glorify yourself in them. The ultimate position of the church of a believer is glorification. Amen. Amen. That is the ultimate purpose of the church. That is the ultimate mandate of the Heavenly Father. That we will come to that place where we will bear the image of the Father. That that which we see through the glass but dimly, we will then see face to face. The Bible says it does not yet appear what we shall be. But when we shall see him, we will be like him. 
When we shall see him, we will be like him. This is this is our pursuit. Our pursuit is not just getting to heaven, but our pursuit is that we will be conformed to the image of our Father. We will be conformed and transformed into the image of the Almighty God. That, that, that we will be seen when he sees us, we will be like him. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. You said in your word that the glory of the latter house that will be greater than the former. You said that the whole earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And so today we pray as a church, show us your glory. We pray like Moses did, O oh God, and no one else, O oh God, dared to utter it, but he says, show me your glory. Moses was resolute in this one fact. He says, God, if you will not go with me, do not take me from this place. I pray today that we will come to that place where we say, God, I do not want to move without you. To every son and daughter of God that is in this place, joining us online, hearing these messages, hearing a, a, a video or a voice recording, would you pray like Moses said, Lord, if you are not going with me, do not lead me from this place. I want to be assured that you are going with me. I want to be assured that I've been led by the Spirit of the Lord because you said those that are called sons of God are led by the Spirit of the Lord. We are not leading God. God is leading. Us. The steps of the righteous man and woman is ordered by the Lord. That you, oh God, you said you will make rivers in the desert. Show us your Lord. 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 Oh, once again, upon the face of the earth. Oh God, let there be a manifestation of the glory of the Lord. And there will be manifestations that save the Lord. Manifestations of healings and deliverances. There are manifestations of supernatural encounters and, and restorations. In this day, save the Lord. In this day, save the Lord. Once again, the church will see a measure of the power of God like it's never seen it before. This is our season. This is our time. God, do it in, our, in, in, in this age. Do it, oh God, in this 21st century church. Do it in, amongst the God of people who are hungry and thirst starting you, God. Show up and manifest your power. You are a great God. And there is no one like you. So Lord, as we worship and as we praise you tonight, we say, Lord, speak, Lord. In Jesus' name, speak, Lord.
come right now when you surrender to our God. The God of the all things, not just something. It's a big God and a mighty God. Come on, speak it over your life right now. My best is yet to come. My best is yet to come.
this evening, I would like us to just take a moment. I want us to just pray and, and just intercede on behalf of the, the worship team tonight. Amen. I just feel that in my spirit. And all of us have been blessed by the ministry of music and singing and the sacrifice that it takes to produce that. And today, we want to just take a moment. You may be online. You can look at them and just pray over them. Some of you know their names. You can call their names before the Lord. But right here in this house tonight, I'd like you to just stretch forth your hands toward them. Tonight, we're just praying a blessing over each one of them. I'm here to say that the glory of the latter house, there's a glory that is coming upon you. There's a presence that is manifesting itself in you. There's a sound of heaven that has been captured within your spirit. There's a burning of new songs. There's a burning of new sounds. God is 
increasing your sphere of influence. And Elijah was ready to prophesy. He said, bring me a minstrel. And Saul was troubled. He said, bring me a minstrel. As David played. <laughs> David played in the in the throne room of Saul and later sat on the throne. God is going to elevate you into spiritual dimensions. That your giftings and graces will extend beyond your gift. Right now. I pray for a strong measure of a, a spirit of impartation. As you administer, may healing take place. As you minister, may restoration take place. May lost ones find salvation. May those that are backslidden be drawn back to God. May there be fresh anointings and mantles transferred through the ministry of music and worship. Bless your sons and daughters today. Bless your sons and daughters today. Bless Lorenzo. Bless Bob. Bless Joanne. Bless Calvin. Bless Axel. Bless Daniel. Bless Caitlin. Bless Joanne. Bless Benji. Bless Cheryl. Bless Kelsa. Bless Liam. Bless Lanash. Bless Keegan. Bless Lena. As the names of God of the 72, the 70 elders that will be chosen by Moses, as their names will be named and written down, that there was a mantle that came upon them. So I pray today, God bless them as they bless us in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. amen. And amen and amen. You may be seated. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for worship team. Amen. I just felt in my spirit we receive on a weekly basis from you. And in some way we could respond, yeah. even through our prayer. Amen. Yeah. And so tonight I want to just speak a little bit on days of medicals. Amen. Amen. And I'm just going to share with you just a few thoughts from the scripture and we're going to get one testimony. Amen. I believe we are living in days of medicals. Yes. Amen. Yeah. And I want to just share with you a an account from a book called God's Generals and it speaks about different revivalists and their experiences and some of the miracles that God did in their lives and I feel that on, I want to do this over the next few weeks for us to get it in our spirit to start expecting the miraculous yeah. Yeah. amen that the supernatural must become natural yes. Yes. for us yeah. hallelujah amen yeah. amen yeah. We, we, we hear of so many things, and I spoke about it on Sunday. I said, you know, why do we find it so hard to believe in a God of miracles? Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. I remember Pastor John sharing many years ago when we had our praise a and he shared three points. He says, uh, we, we serve a, a God of miracles. Yeah. Yeah. We read mm -hmm. a 
book of miracles. And then he made the last statement, I am a miracle. Amen. 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 And all of us have seen that manifest in our lives. Yeah. And I think we need to start to speak these words of faith in to us again. Now, the Bible said in, in, in Matthew chapter 3, verses 11, it says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, and he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Then Acts chapter 19, verses 2. Have ye received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And G Jesus had promised that the Holy Spirit will come and that he would be, a, we would be the one to baptize you and the disciples in the Spirit. Amen? Amen. So I want you to know today, the, uh, John, in addressing the people, says, I baptize you in water unto repentance. But there's one that comes after me that is mightier than I. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I pray today that we will come to that place where there will be a baptism of the Holy Ghost yeah. again yeah. in the house of God. People yes. will begin yeah. to operate in the gifts of the Spirit, our children and adults alongside each other prophesying speaking in tongues, blessing the name of the Lord, giftings of wisdom and knowledge and all of the other gifts finds its manifestation in us. I want to speak a little bit about a, uh, an evangelist by the name of Fred Bosworth and there's an account of a miracle in, 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 uh, that happened around 1925 and it may seem like a long time ago. And this happened in an area called Scranton, Pennsylvania. There was a little girl that was playing amongst her other friends and she fell from a swing. And as the, the, when she fell from the swing, she clutched her chest and she, uh, she experienced such pain. But she lifted herself up and went home. And there was a injury that was invisible that she encountered that day which will take place in the coming weeks, it will find greater manifestation. And in weeks to come, this, this injury that was on the inside started to manifest in a lump, and it started to grow to the size of an orange on her chest. And her parents took her, her name was Rafaela, and they took her to a pediatric specialist at, at John Hopkins University, and they went to check on her. And he administered many uh, uh, tests on her, and then he pronounced a very, a very serious diagnosis. And he said, this young girl has got sarcoma cancer on her chest. And her parents started to grieve because in those days, cancer was not something that people knew much about. And she got to the place where after, after days, they started seeing their daughter slowly losing weight. They started seeing, and then they, they, they determined that they're gonna look at surgery. And when they went back to the specialist and they asked him, he says the, the condition is so deep rooted that it would be impossible to perform surgery. In that time it was not, the, the, the science that did not catch up and was not developed enough to treat this kind of the, of illness. So what they did was they just applied an ointment on the exterior continuously and every day they would bandage it with the hope that somehow there would be a slim chance of recovery. But after months of ineffective surgery she kept, kept on getting worse. So one day the, the, the Sirios family, this was the name of the family, they, they, they invited the doctor, the pediatrician to come to their home for dinner. And as the doctor sat at the dinner table, he sat across the young girl and he could not help himself but become overwhelmed by the, the impossibility that sat in front of him that he was not able to rectify or somehow be a blessing. And then the physician turned to the mother 
and says there's a man that is holding some special kind of meetings in a large tent in Scranton. He prays for people and they get well. The mother turned around to the doctor and says, are you kidding me? He says, no, I'm not joking. I had a patient that had a large goiter and he went to the meeting and he got healed. And he said this young evangelist, Fred Bosworth, prayed for her and was in, they were instantly healed. So the family decided they're going to go down to this meeting, this healing meeting. And as they get to this, this healing meeting the first, for the first time, they heard Fred Bosworth preach about faith. And then they were selling a book where he spoke, where the book was called Christ My Healer. And they bought the book and they went home and they, their faith was encouraged and they continuously read this book for the whole week. And the following week they returned back to, to, to the meeting. And after he finished preaching, he made an altar call. The young girl found herself standing at the edge of the platform. And he prayed a, a prayer of healing over her. And he prayed that God will heal her and use her to be a living monument for the praise and glory of God. The family returned home that same night. And the mother went to do what she would always do in the evening, change the dressing and, and put some, some ointment on, on the home. And the young girl turned to her mother and says, don't do it. Don't you believe what the man of God said? Amen. I am healed. And so they continued for the next few days. And as the days went day on day, slowly they started to see it. The one morning they woke up, and the next thing they saw that the, 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 the swelling completely disappeared. Mm -hmm. And the healing came back. And, and, the, and this is their account. They said, the morning dawned, and with it came a new life for our daughter. She stepped out into her faith like in Jesus, and he met her. He says, all oh, the joy and the glory of it. The morning sunlight revealed that all the swelling from her collarbone and under her arm had gone. Five days later, the lump was the size of a small nut, and eventually it disappeared completely. Praise the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. You see, sometimes it's the prayer of faith. The Bible says the prayer of faith shall heal the sick and God will raise them up. When we look at this life of Fred Bosworth, there were numerous miracles, even in his own life, that led him eventually to become an evangelist and used in the gift of healing. So I want you to understand this. He, he, as a young boy, he was, uh, he was exposed to, 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 to the harsh heat and, and, and cold, and he got what was called TB, tuberculosis. In those days, it was almost incurable. And he developed a, a lung infection that, that, that would have cut short his lifespan. And as he became an adult, it became more and more worse up until he himself encountered a woman that experienced the power of God and the move of the Holy Spirit on her life. She prayed for him. He was healed completely. I want you to understand, sometimes you go yeah. through things in your life yeah. so that God can produce a grace and an anointing yeah. in your life yeah. that you can minister healing. Yeah. Some years later after receiving his own healing, he became a channel of healing for somebody else. Mm -hmm. When God delivers you from something, when yes. God heals you from something, be a channel of yes. healing yes. to somebody yes. else. Yes. Because when the same God that did it for you yes. is going to do it in their life. Yes. Yes. I want you to get to the place where you understand you don't just go through things for any no reason. Yes, yes. You go through things so that the power of God yes. can be made manifest yes. in and through yes. your life. And so we see this 
in the life of, of, of this family. I'm going to ask Neil to come up. And as he comes up, I, wa I want you to understand this. This is important for us to know that the process of healing comes through us waiting. Now, I want you to, to hear from Neil. Neil had his experience and he's going to share with you what the Lord did in his life. And uh, bless you. You'll be blessed. Amen. Amen. Greetings in the name of Jesus. Firstly, I want to thank uh, Pastor Jenna for giving me this opportunity to share my testimony. Over the years, I personally experienced the hand of God over my life, and I have literally seen a million little miracles take place. When we were about, uh, this I'm talking about March last year, when we were about to go into full lockdown because of COVID-19, I received a word from God to anoint the doorpost of our home, and my family and pray over them that the angel of death would pass over. Now this word was tested when Cheryl first tested positive and she shared a testimony of God's sovereign hand over her during that difficult time. Just over a month ago, Pastor shared uh, about John G. Lake and for those of you who might have missed that sermon, John G. Lake was a missionary who came to South Africa in the early 1900s. And during his time here, a pandemic broke out and people were dying around him, but it never affected him. The scientists at that time were astonished, so they took the virus and placed it on the skin of his hand and the virus died. Now when Pastor shared that, this word resonated in my spirit. And I declared it over my life. And Shadow fell ill at work uh, one uh, Thursday afternoon and uh, she was, uh, doctor suggested that she do a COVID-19 uh, test again and both Cheryl and I at that time thought that you know she wouldn't, she wouldn't be uh, positive but she was. Now before we got the test results I spoke to Pastor Maggie that evening and uh, she didn't ask me, she requested that I uh, or she more or less demanded that I, I sleep in Calvin's room that night and uh, not by Cheryl. And uh, I told uh, Pastor Maggi, I said, Pastor Maggi, Pastor Gerald shared on uh, the miracle that God had performed over John G. Lake and he would do it over my life. Uh, I had, and I also told her I had also spent time with Cheryl and if she's positive, the chances is that I might be positive as well. And I wouldn't want to risk passing that on to Calvin. So that night I slept at the lake side uh, of the bed. And, uh, <laughs> and then when we, uh, when, you know, I never really felt here, but then I had a little sore throat, uh, the headaches. And on the Monday, I went in to have the COVID test myself and Calvin went in to have the COVID test done. And I tested positive. So and Calvin was very good. So I tested positive. But this caused a great concern for Dr. Pillay. Uh, he had realized I put on a weight in the last year. And uh, the strain of this uh, virus uh, is so, uh, it, it, so uh, demonstrative that, it, it, you know, it can, there, 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 there was a fear in them that something greater might happen to me. And uh, uh, Dr. Pillay suggested that they put me on a program. Program that they were running, and I went three days later. I went on the program. They did the test. They did a whole lot of blood tests on me, and all those tests came back uh, clear. So, but but I also had to do another COVID nineteen test. Three days after I tested positive, they did a COVID nineteen test on me, and the next day I was booked for a chest X ray. And when I get to the clinic, they fetch me, take me to the clinic, and say your results came back negative. So the researcher said this is impossible, mm -hmm. but we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it, we're gonna have to do another test. Mm -hmm. So he says go into the consulting room and cough. So maybe those viruses are moved down towards your lung area, but cough and bring it up. So I'm in this room coughing my <laughs> guts out and forcing myself to cough and, and trying to draw the flame from the back. So in I takes the, the swab, he rubs it on the back of my throat, it's very uncomfortable. 
And then he takes it and he sticks it down my nostril and he keeps it there a little longer. He removes it. And he takes it and he sends it for, a, uh, for the results. And the results come back negative. So he's uh, baffled. The doctor's baffled. And they say, they, you know, they can't explain this. Uh, now, uh, for me, I knew what God had done in my life. So I was, I was confident that I'd been healed. Now, I want to tell you what, why the doctors are baffled. The COVID-19, the virus, it, it, uh, it lives in your throat and your nasal area. And when the, that's one of the reasons why you have to steam and gargle, is to kill the virus. So even if it goes down to your system, it wouldn't affect your lungs. So the reason why the worry when it gets onto your lungs, it can cause COVID pneumonia, you have difficulties breathing. So when he asked me to cough, the very first thing I told him is Shell's been check checking my oxygen levels and it's between 96 and 98. So it definitely it's not in my lungs, you know. So so I'm going to give him reasons and they also say up to 21 days after testing, first testing positive, even though the virus is dead, you do a test, it'll come back negative i'll come back positive now i want you to know that i was completely healed and i want you to know yeah. this evening nothing yeah. happens yeah. just happens god is intentional yeah. Yeah. and why i say it's god is intentional because you know the word of god speaks it says there's there's uh, life and death in the tongue so whatever you declare you 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 give it life mm -hmm. so jesus also says if you pray and ask anything in my name according to the will of the Father, it will be done. He also goes on to, to say in the Bible, if two shall come into agreement, touching anything, it shall be established. Now for me, most of my life, when I thought of two coming in agreement, I thought of myself and, and someone else agreeing with me. But I realized that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf. So I don't need someone else. I need to believe that Jesus is with me. So, so I believe that's what happened. But I want to share something with you today. You know, when you when I, when I declared that the same power that was able to 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 protect and cover John G. Lake during the pandemic is able to do it now for me. So God did it for me, and. Uh, when I tested positive, I want you to see the miracle in this. When I tested positive on the 6th of September, I was required to isolate for 10 days. That would make it up until the 16th of September. You want to hear something amazing? John G. Lake died on the 16th of September, 1935. God is the same yesterday, yeah. today, yeah. and forever. Yeah. What he did in the past, he's able to do today. Yeah. Now, you just have to believe, and I want you to know that, you know, in order for the word that I declare to be established, the test for the COVID-19 is 850 rand to go to the lab and do it. Now, I wouldn't have done the test. I had no reason to do a second test. I work on my own, uh, and I don't need to isolate, I don't, I don't need to give a uh, letter of clearance to anyone. So I don't need the second test done. So the test, for the second test to be done and the third test to be done was to prove the healing that God had done. Because I wouldn't have done the test. I wouldn't. And the word, what, that which I declared, no one would have known whether it would have been true or not. So for them, for them to put me in the program, to them to look at me and think that I was going to be at risk, is something God orchestrated yeah. to show yeah. that he's able to do. Yeah. So I want you to know for those who thought, where is God in this pandemic? God is still seated yeah. on the yeah. 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 able to yeah. 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 Now COVID-19, everyone thinks it's got the hold of us. It doesn't. Uh -uh. It doesn't. You might be scared. You know when Pastor said, uh, when Pastor said about, uh, uh, he said we need to, to pray Psalms 91 over us, over our families, and declare Every time during the, the, the pandemic, when I grew, when fear grew, got hold of me, I acknowledged him as El, Elion, Most High God. I said, He is Almighty, He is El Shaddai, yeah. All Sufficient God, the yeah. Great I Am. Yeah. He is the Lord Yahweh, Self Existent yeah. God. Yeah. He is my refuge and my fortress, a safe place to hide. He is Elohim, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He is my shield and buckler. Everything I need to fight and win. He is my dwelling place. Yeah. A place where to abide and rest with him. He is my refuge. A place of uh, security and peace. He holds me fast in his love. And he grants me salvation. 
He is my God, my portion, my healer. Amen. I declare that over yeah. uh, my life. And I said, Lord, whatever you're doing in my life, I know he's doing it for a reason. I know that yeah. people are fearful about what the virus has done. And you know, this after this evening, I want you to know, God is still performing miracles. Yes. Yes. And, and, and people and people might be baffled. Doctors might be baffled. People might come up with a reason. Yeah. But I believe in my heart. Yeah. And I know he touched the name. It does not... The, the, you're not going to find coronavirus in me. Yeah. It's, and, and when I say it, I say it with confidence. You know what's the other thing I did? I, if, since last week, Thursday, I've been doing at least five kilometers in the morning, doing a brisk walk, doing it in, in, in between 45 minutes and an, uh, and an hour. So I've ever been walking slowly, and I tell you that I know that I don't have a problem with my lungs. I don't have a problem. And I know God has healed me, and, and, and for those of you out there, those of you that are listening on the air, those of you might have lost loved ones during this time, those of you might have someone that you know is, is in hospital and they, and they attack the advice, I want you to know that when you call upon yeah. the name of yeah. the Lord Amen. and you trust and you Amen. believe in Him, and the healing will come upon them. I declare the healing. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. I declare this day, Father God, that there is a coming, Father God, a, a, a complete healing over the land, over this virus, Lord. We declare that it will not hold us this day, Lord. Father, I declare over people that have been found bound by this virus this day. I declare at least the same thing, Lord. Father, that which you have done in my life, and you in the life of others yes, this day, Lord. Yes, I pray in the name of Jesus. Complete healing this day, Lord. Father, I just speak life into the lives this day. Those that are in hospitals, Lord, begin yes, to touch them. Yes, Holy Spirit, we begin to minister. Father, send your angels, yes, Lord. Lord. You yes, said you give your angels charge over us, Lord. I believe this day, Lord, that you, you are doing something new in the season, causing a stirring up, Lord, for those that will believe in you this day, Lord Jesus. Do that, Lord. Do that what you can this day, Lord. We call upon you to dispatch angels on behalf of your people this day. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the peace this day, Lord. I just want to say one thing as well. You know, when uh, when I knew that I was healed, the word of God came to me and it was in anger and it says, the glory of the latter, uh, the glory of the glory of the latter temple, temple, this temple, the glory that of this temple, the latter of this temple, when I said this temple, I said it's talking about Jesus. This temple will be greater than the former. But it said, in this place, I will give you peace. And when it said, in this place, I'm not talking about a physical location. It's talking about in this place, in this place of uncertainty, in this place of fear, in this place where we are riddled with this virus, I will give you peace. And I, and I took that word and I said, it's for me, Lord. Amen. Hope you were blessed. Thank you. You know, I, one of the reasons is that I believe that God stirs up our faith. Yeah. Amen. And faith comes by hearing. Amen. And so today we, we see a, a testimony of what God can do. Even in the midst, we know all of the negative reports. Yeah. We know of all of the WhatsApps social media, yeah. everything that comes up. But when you see something with your own eyes, yeah. someone that you know, yeah. and you see the manifestation of that, you know that God is great, amen? Yeah. That means we, 
we take care, we be safe, we follow all that the necessary precautions and all of that. But we believe our God is able. Amen. 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 Although in all of the compliance, they mustn't lose faith. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And we've learned something about declaring a thing yeah. and it be established. And so I think this is something when, when Neil said this, and I think that was the important point. You need to get a word that you hold on to in yeah. your heart. Yes. Yes. Amen. That even when you're going through even the toughest time in yeah. your life, yeah. that word will pull you through. Yeah, that's true. But if you don't have a word and you're clinging to other people's experiences yeah, and other true. people's encounters yeah. and other people's yeah. news, yeah. you're going to find that manifesting yeah. in your life. But if you cling on to a word, so that it pays it, it, it gives us a thing that when we sit in church, Every time you, you gather around the word of God, say, Lord, I need a word yes. yeah. that is going to pull me through whatever I'm going to encounter. Yes. And you hold it in your spirit and, and you put that inside. Yeah. And I think this is important for us to do. Amen. Yeah. And so tonight, let us just pray. We're going to give thanks to God. God, we return thanks to you. Yes. You are a faithful God and you're a God of miracles. Yes. And the days of miracles are not over. Yes. Yes. What you did in the past, you are doing yes. again. Yes. If you've healed in the past, yes. you will heal again. Yes. What you've done, oh God, over a hundred years ago in the life of John G. Lake, you are doing in the life yes. of Neil yes. and several others yes. that are yet that, that are alive today. Thank you. I pray for miracles. Yes. Thank you, a place where COVID will not have any trace yes. Yes. of being in the bodies of people. Yes. People that wear respirator, uh, respirators and, if they, and ventilators, when they come out of it, that there will be no trace yes, that yes, they've yes, ever yes, had yes. any of that. Thank you, I pray, O oh God, that there are going to be miracles upon miracles upon miracles. Father, because we've heard bad news, we've only got negative reports. We've been told we cannot fight this. It's an unseen enemy. We do not know where it is and we do not know how to fight it. But today we understand that the blood of Jesus has never lost its power. That you said by your, by your stripes we were healed. And so today I pray a covering over Neil and I pray a covering over his household and his family as they share the news of the good news of God, dispelling a spirit of fear that has captured, O oh God, the hearts of mankind all across the globe. Father, today we are believing God that there's going to be a miracle upon miracle upon miracle and we are going to see oh God a, 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 a deliverance from the scourge in Jesus name now Lord we pray let there be miracles in the lives of people that the supernatural is becoming natural we are seeing and we're going to live in the prophetic manifestation of every word you have said. We give you the praise, the glory and the honor for what you're doing in this day. It is truly the day for miracles. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.